Good afternoon, everyone. It's Colonel Aldous Valor here with you once again. And the only reason why I have never sought out somebody who had this opinion was because I honestly didn't think anyone would be retarded enough to hold this opinion. This is a video response to JJ Squawks, and in particular her recent video which turned out to serve as a reaffirmation of a previous video in which she claims that biological sex is a social construct and therefore should be discounted, discredited, and disregarded as something that doesn't exist. And she fails to realize the implications of making such a statement. For instance, transgendered people feel that their biological sex and their gender do not align in spite of the fact that they have no basis in reality for comparison. Let's take an absurd example of somebody who's never seen the color purple before. And I'm not talking about people who are colorblind. But people who have never seen the color purple before can't, in honesty, say that purple is their favorite color because they've never experienced it. I'm a cisgendered male, which means that not only am I the enemy of feminism, but my sex and my gender align. And they only do that because I don't have any mental disorders. Whoa, whoa, I can hear you all screaming, I can, that sexual dysphoria is not a mental disorder. And you know, if I went by outdated source material, I'd agree with you. The DSM-5, aside from switching from Roman numerals to Arabic numerals, reclassifies sexual identity disorder as sexual dysphoria and defines it as a mental disorder. Now, of course, they do this so that people who experience sexual dysphoria can get the treatment that they need, but for the same reason that we can't call Pluto a planet anymore, we have to call sexual dysphoria a mental disorder. The DSM-5, simply put, says that sexual dysphoria happens when somebody's gender does not align with their biological sex. So, if biological sex does not exist, as JJ claims it does not, that means that transgendered people do not exist either. You know, all those transgendered people that you, you know, stand up and speak for and defend. Yeah, they don't exist. Making that claim that biological sex doesn't exist marginalizes an entire group of people, and I won't stand for it. It devalues human life every bit as much as opponents of same-sex marriage denying gay people the right to get married. Actually, it dehumanizes them even more so. Because while opponents of same-sex marriage, you know, don't see gay people as people, they at least acknowledge their existence. And I might also add that the DSM-5 does actually identify biological sex as a thing. Even Johns Hopkins University explains that biological sex is defined by genitalia and or chromosomes. So while your contention that biological sex is not defined by any one particular thing is technically correct, it's at least defined by one particular thing and or one other particular thing and not this thing, that thing, this thing, and this other thing. So say what you want about my position, I'm at least citing sources. What's that? You're citing sources too? Oh, that's right, what were they? Um, oh right, your friends in nursing school. Not your friends in medical school and not even nursing school graduates, but individuals who have not yet completed all of the requirements to receive their nursing certification. Not to mention the fact, even though that I'm going to, that they are your friends, who, by virtue of the fact that they are your friends, I would assume would share at least some of the bullshit opinions that you like to vomit. To further disprove your claims, we need look no further than cats. This video ran long, I need another one. Holy shit. Cats don't have societies, and therefore they don't have social constructs. Now I can already hear you clicking away at your keyboards about to type something about big cats. Yes, big cats do have some kinds of societies, some of them do, I should say, which are dominated by males, I might add. But even big cats have marked differences between males and females. And I'm not talking about just their genitalia either. 
Look at lions, for example. Most prominently is the mane. Female lions don't have manes as much as they want to be males. But no, I'm talking about domestic cats, and in particular those with calico coloring. And that was a little bit harder to say than I thought it was going to be. It was harder to say than it was to write down. The genetic markers for calico or tortoiseshell coloring are on the X chromosome only. Which means that male calicos are extremely rare. And this is also the University of Miami stating that, you know, biological sex is determined by chromosomes. But male calico cats are extremely rare, and some can be priced up to a thousand dollars, which puts them at the same level as the prized Maine Coon. So, JJ Squawks, if biological sex isn't a thing, then why are male calico cats so expensive? I've been Aldous Valor, and you can go fuck the dog. To further disprove your claims, we look, we have to look, to further disprove your claims, we need look no further than cats. Cats don't have societies, and therefore they don't have... That was shit. That was absolutely terrible. I, I had, you know, I, that was a, I had a very hard time doing that, working from a script. I can't believe it. Anyway, that's all.